We're gonna cook steak in 50 different ways, such as using hot molten glass, a laser pointer, and even cooking in the dishwasher. We'll start off simple with a steak in a cast iron pan. These experiments will get crazier and crazier throughout the whole video. We're gonna be eating steaks for weeks after this one. Because we're doing so many steaks today, we're not gonna be seasoning every single one. That would just be a waste of time. But for symbolic purposes, we're gonna be cooking this one with garlic, rosemary, and butter. He's Max the meat guy. Of course it's gonna be perfectly cooked. What'd I tell you? Something we all know and love, burgers. I think we already know this one's gonna work, but you know Max and I always grind our own meat. Wink, wink. We're looking for a really nice ratio of fat and meat. And you wanna have your meat nice and cold. Roll it up into a ball and just gently form those beautiful patties. If there's one thing Max and I know, it's how to make a good burger. Down with the patty. We're just gonna give it a quick flip. Check out that crust. A burger is a great way to cook a steak. One of the most classic ways to cook a steak on the gas grill. Do we really need to wait for this one? We've seen it a million times. Seasoned everything up and got them on the grill. Look at 250 for three hours. I got a nice skirt steak. It's longer than your sister's skirt last night, but a little dope. If there's one thing we can all agree is that cooking the right steak at the perfect thinness is always the ultimate goal. Another classic method, oven baked. 350 Fahrenheit. Just like that, she is good to go. That looks amazing. Yeah, honestly, really nice that color on this. so good. I must say, I'm excited to cut into this thing. It looks a little bit like a ham to me. It could definitely use a sear, but overall, not bad. Well, we can't really know until we taste it. I call that a win. This one, we're gonna broil. Set to 550, and in we go. Whoa, that is smoky. Pretty nice looking color, we're just gonna flip it. Oh, shit. What do we do? Open a window. Do not broil your steak. Oh. <laughs> Fail. Dry aged steak. Whoa, 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 Nick. We're supposed to cut off the pellicle. What are you doing here? We're just gonna slice off the edges like so. This part is not really edible. Moving the fat as well until we're left with the perfect dry aged steak. And now back into the pan. Not the biggest steak in the world, but check out that sizzle. There is nothing like a dry aged steak. Especially when you don't rest it. Okay, another classic at home method. We're gonna braise this steak. Start with a quick sear. That is a nice sear. That's a sear right there, boys. Now we're just gonna add in our braising liquid and cover it up. Oh, that was good. And our braised steak is, ooh, that's hot. Okay, and our braised steak is complete. It's been braising for about two hours. Let's slice into it. And really, we're just hoping for a nice pull-apart texture. Uh, doesn't really feel braised. Just looks like a well-done steak. Yeah, you really shouldn't braise a steak like this. One of my favorite ways to cook meat, a smoker. And of course, we have our hickory pellets. Nick, we only use applewood here. Low and slow. Okay, and 20 minutes later, this is what we got. We'll slice in, and it looks perfect. Max, that's pretty good. Let me get a bite. Charcoal grill, and of course, we're using apple wood. I'm embarrassed to say this is my first time cooking on a charcoal grill. We got our charcoal nice and hot. That apple wood is lit. Technically, right now, we're cooking high and fast, which is illegal, but it's looking good. Now we'll cover it up to let it finish up the cooking process. All right, let's check this baby out. This steak looks absolutely incredible. We're gonna slice through this thing, and not a real surprise, it looks fantastic. And time for the taste test. A little bit of smoke in my eyes, but that is delicious. A tried and true classic method, sous vide. We're gonna be cooking this at 130 Fahrenheit for one hour. The sous vide is finally done, and you can already tell this right here is a soft, soft steak with lots of juice left behind. That right there is literally edge to edge medium rare. Sous vide for the win. Beef jerky. We've had a lot of extra beef scraps during this video, and we'll probably have enough beef jerky to last a couple years. That is actually delicious. Gyro. Believe it or not, I've already done this one with the Golden Balance. Check it out. I'm gonna carve some nice clean cuts of beef right into my holder here. Bismillah. That is good. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite dinners out there, Korean barbecue. Ah. Korean barbecue is probably one of the coolest food experiences in the world. Mm. Korean barbecue cooks pretty quick. All right, I think we all knew before we even did this one, it's a win. Go. Pink Himalayan salt rock. That is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, that is hot. It's not even pink anymore. It's a nice sizzle. That sounded great. The thing is, these are really thick steaks. Yeah, they are so thick. <laughs> this smells amazing. Not bad. Want to slice it? Let's do it. It worked. Perfect medium rare. 
Hot massage stones. I can pretty much guarantee no one's ever used these for what we're doing right now. These stones are so hot right now. So hot right now. They look gray instead of black, but these were jet black when we put them into the oven. This is gonna be the most uneven sear. Oh, 100%. All right, I think we can all agree this is not gonna work. This looks like what you get at Salt Bay's restaurant. Honestly, this feels like a sin, but we're cooking this one in an air fryer. I'm gonna look up on my phone how to cook steak in an air fryer. 400 degrees for 12 minutes. Whoa. Oh, that looks amazing. That is some beautiful color. We're just gonna slice right down the middle. And let's take a look at that interior. Super juicy, but potentially raw. Rotisserie. The only rotisserie I know is for chicken. Today we're gonna do it with steak. This is the gizmo. Oh. oh, ow. Everything about this is wrong. This is our steak rotisserie. I will place it into the rotisserie machine. Close it up. Max temperature? Say 350. Turn it to rotisserie mode and turn my Crocs into sport mode. There it goes. Nice. Oh, whoa. She's beautiful. It's beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes. Time to check it out. Ow. I mean, the crust on this thing is incredible. Nice golden brown. Looks delicious. First things first, we'll take out the skewer and then it's time to slice. And what I like to call the moment of truth. It's perfect. It was perfect. Perfect. I'm actually surprised how well that worked. Actually, Came really out good. fantastic. Do we need to save this one for jerky or can I save it for later? What? Okay, for this one, ceviche. The only thing I'm missing are some limes. I'm just gonna remove the fat. And while he does that, I'm gonna chop up a bunch of lime. As I'm sure lots of you already know, ceviche is actually cooked. Essentially what happens is the acidity of those limes break down the meat. We're just gonna add in that beef. And then go over it with a bunch of limes. This is basically just gonna be a steak tartare that's actually cooked. We'll finish it for now with just a pinch of salt. And once it's mixed, we're just gonna refrigerate for a few hours. All right. It sort of looks cooked. I wouldn't make this at home. It's now time to boil a steak. I've heard Gordon Ramsay yell about this all too many times. What in the f is going on there? Max, you and I both know this is something we can never be proud of. I'm with you. Oh, it's horrible. Please promise me it's the first and last time for this. All right, our steak has supposedly finished boiling. It looks awful. It's almost starting to flop over like a brisket. It's gray. It does not look good. <laughs> do you want to do the honors? I guess so. Do not try this at home. Zero rendering on that fat, would not recommend. Gordon Ramsay hates this. That dish would have stood up 10 years ago at the age of 12 in MasterChef Junior. Yeah. Uh-oh, the microwave. <laughs> you might remember this microwave from the time we put an egg in here. Manny and I almost died. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. We're gonna add our steak to the microwave. This just feels so wrong. But it might work. We'll see. That's why we're testing. We're about three and a half minutes in. I hear sizzling. Let's check it. Oh, that's God. disgusting. That's so oh. terrible. Completely gray on the bottom, but still red on top. I think we should flip it. Okay. Right? Let's flip yeah. it. That's how you cook stuff. Oh. oh that's bad. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Okay, I think we're done. Oh, oh, <laughs> no. It's just so wet in there. That is not looking good. Slice in. It's so strange that it cooked from top to bottom. It doesn't look terrible though. It doesn't look good. That is absolutely gross. Panini press. This one happens to be a George Foreman. You burned your foot on a Foreman grill. I like waking up to the smell of bacon. Sue me. And in we go. We're just gonna let that do its thing. Time to see if George Foreman has done it again. It does look like we have some fantastic grill marks, but the real question, how is it cooked? George, that is quite possibly the worst steak I've ever seen in my life. I'm not treating you to lunch anymore! This is the one I'm most excited about. We're making steak waffles. Hey kids, breakfast is ready. Dad, you made steak waffles again? Your favorite. Just check out that waffle pattern. It's perfect. That has to be one of the coolest steaks I've ever seen. Both the sides are completely raw, but the inside, absolutely perfect. Steak waffles for the win. Rice cooker. I will say I use a rice cooker basically every night for dinner. I love rice. Never use it for this. First we'll go in with a little bit of oil. And we're just gonna stuff in our steak. Oh, in it goes. Okay, long grain rice. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's funny. You should be ashamed of yourself. We just let this go for a full cycle that you would cook rice on. Oh my. Immediate now. Probably one of the least smart ideas of the day, toaster. This one's quite simple. Drop them in. Now we wait. Cranking it all the way up for a nice sear. Yeah, yeah well, actually, the, the fat on this one actually looks fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. Like, I think it's oh, 
Oh, oh my god. I've always wanted to know if we can cook a steak in a hotel room. Let's iron. I mean, this yeah. seems to be working. Amazing. <laughs> Zero wrinkles on this. We're treating this steak like we would a nice dress shirt. It's gonna be wrinkle free. Time to steam a steak. About 15, 20 minutes later, here's what we're looking at. And if you don't feel like it's quite finished, we can continue steaming it. It's all about that attention to detail. Ah, oh, God. That was hot. This entire steak is extremely gray. I'll slice in, and actually, the results aren't too bad. But again, who wants to eat a gray steak? Honestly, this steak looks amazing. It's time to find out how amazing it really is. Not bad. It's still moving. Nick, if you're too scared to eat it, I will. Pretty good. The verdict, this thing works extremely well. Next up, confit. We're cooking beef in its own fat. We'll pour in all this beef fat and slowly let it cook. You've probably seen this before with duck confit, but never with beef. This steak looks a little overcooked, but we never judge a steak by its crust. That actually looks fantastic. Cooked in beef fat definitely works. We're cooking this one in 10 pounds of butter. Oh. <laughs> this right here is 10 pounds of mayonnaise. Uh Butter. It looks exactly like mayonnaise. Our butter's melted and in she goes. Oh. We've both done this with lobster, by the way. And while we don't know the results of this one yet, when it came to the results for the lobster, it did absolutely nothing. That did absolutely nothing. Oh, whoa. Oh, hey, whoa. Man, I feel like it's like nearing. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yummy. We essentially just boiled this in butter. It looks pretty good. That's one of the best looking steaks on the inside that we've had today. That outside though. This could be the best bite of meat we have ever had in our lives. <laughs> Anything's possible. Once again, I'd say the butter did absolutely nothing. This guy is gonna get deep fried. It sounds crazy, but I've done it before and it's not the worst. This steak right here has the meanest crust we've seen yet. And that's why I say deep frying isn't usually that bad. I'll be the judge of that, Nick. I mean, this right here is easily the best crust of the day. But how's the inside? So that right there is what we call a bullseye. Overcooked on the outside, very rare on the inside, but overall, not terrible. I hit a bullseye. Chicken fried steak. Into the flour, get that nice and covered, right into the buttermilk, back into the flour, and into the hot oil. The hope is that we got a nice Popeyes-like crust. I would say by looking at this thing that we sort of did. Pretty nice golden brown, nice and crunchy. You gotta love the sound of that. This has gotta be one of our most tasty looking steaks of the day. This is better than we could have ever imagined so far. Let's do it. Ow, that's good. That's really good. I'm gonna have to chicken fry my steaks more often. Just like we see at Salt Bay's restaurant, pouring hot oil. And we're just gonna ladle our 400 degree oil right on top. It's a little underwhelming, not gonna oh, lie. Wait. Oh wait, hold on though. Can we lift it up and do it on the fat? Sort of working, I guess. At this point, I think we can all go ahead and agree this is don't be salt bay. We're cooking this one in the pizza oven. I feel like this will either be really good or absolutely terrible. Let's take a quick look at this steak. To me, it's one of the better looking steaks we've had this entire experiment. Just check out that fat cap. And just like that, our steak is done. And this steak looks absolutely perfect. This is probably my favorite steak of the day. This steak is so good, we gotta give some of the Nick's dog pepper. Pepper. Hey, pepper. High five. There you go. Easy bake oven. Now this one's actually my personal favorite. We've done it a few times and it most definitely works. I call that a success. Next up, we have a device called the Searzall. Seems like it might be taking a while. Get out of the way, Nate. This is a real torch. This is actually working great. Get out of the way, Max. Just listen to that thing. We made that steak sing. Flamethrower. Whoa, 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 what? you're gonna light it's my fine. studio on it's fire. Next up, we're gonna roast this steak over fire. First, I'm gonna add in a bunch of ethanol. That is so much. Where's the fire extinguisher? We'll take some slices of our steak. And then, with my tongs, here we go. Why is it taking so long? Nick, is this fire even real? It's real, but it's definitely not as hot as I thought it would be right now. Like, very not hot fire. I love that we can just play with the fire with our hands. <laughs> Oh, looks like I just burned off all the hairs on my hand. Nick, you gotta know when to give up. This one's a fail. Tong Hulu. And because you all asked me to do it so many times, I've already done it. I wanna love it, but I hate it. Freeze dried steak. This steak has a 25 year shelf life. I'll be eating this when I'm 55 years old. Pretty nifty. You sure it's doing anything? I hope so. Wow. Did it?
I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> the can opener is too weak for this. That is gross. That's disgusting. <laughs> it doesn't smell as bad as it looks. It says to just add water, so. Whoa. They turn steak colored right away. It's like steak cereal. Wait, that's amazing. I don't know if amazing's the word there, Nick. Are you gonna eat one? Of course. It just tastes like steak. Really? I didn't even thought. This was really expensive, and now I kind of understand why. Wow. Right? It's actually not bad. Freeze-dried steak. This is gonna be the best treat in the world for my puppy, Pepper. Okay, this steak right here, we're taking outside and cooking in a car. Hey, Nick, your car's outside, right? I'll grab the keys. All right, we're here at the car, and I've heard that you can literally cook a steak in the engine. Nick, where is the engine? It's electric. And now we're cooking this one completely covered in salt. We want a nice wet sand type consistency and we're just gonna mix it all together. Kinda feels like snow. Okay, we're just gonna lay down our first layer of salt. We're just gonna spread it out nice and evenly and just place down that beautiful steak and we're just gonna completely cover it with salt. Pack that baby in nice and tight and we go. What? Oh, cause that roller's gone. Dude, what is going on with this? <laughs> oh, it's my first time using an oven, and in the oven at 350. Out she comes. Here we go, Max. And we have a fully salt-encrusted steak. Just gonna crack it open. It's like a dinosaur egg. The question is, how is it cooked, and is it way too salty? Let's find out. Definitely on the rare side. Let's give it a quick taste. A bit salty. Mm. Baking in clay. I actually used to do a lot of pottery back in the day. Oh really? Yeah, never did I think I'd be cooking steaks. First, we're gonna treat this like a nice loaf of bread. Just take some slices. And I'll be on this side layering these down to make a nice foundation for our steak. At this point, we're gonna take a piece of parchment, wrap one of our steaks nicely and tightly inside the parchment. And we're just gonna ever so gently wrap up our present. And in she goes. All right, let's see what we got. Looks good. Oh, nice. Oh, this steak is so mushy. Oh, Ooh. it looks like it's been sous vide. Yeah, sous vide or steamed. It's actually not bad. It looks pretty good. It's really soft and flimsy, and if we could sear it, I feel like it'd be the perfect steak. I agree. But unfortunately, each method must stand alone. This is a fail. Cooking underground. Now our good friend Guga's already done this before, so I'm pretty sure it works. It is tender. It's, te oh yeah, it's tender. It's really tender. We're gonna cook this one over a bonfire. And we're treating this just like a marshmallow. We want a perfect golden brown exterior. There's a reason they call me Max the Meat Guy, not Max the Marshmallow Guy. Just getting a nice crust on either side. Oh, oh my God, Nick, Nick. Uh, we got a problem here. Our steak is on fire. And this is why you don't cook over a bonfire. Uh. We're gonna cook this steak caveman style. All this means is that we're literally cooking the steak directly on the coals. I do not have high hopes for this steak, but it actually has some really interesting looking grill marks and the fat cap ended up getting a really nice crust too. We'll slice into our steak. And it is burnt on the outside, raw on the inside. Let's go for a bite. That is sandy. This one's going in the dishwasher. The cycle has just finished. She's looking good. And we're just opening up our bag, and there's our steak. And just check out how much juice got released. I have a feeling this is gonna be perfect. Just slice into it. I'd say not bad. <laughs> it's not like for a dishwasher. Dead on. I don't wanna hurt anybody's feelings, but this dishwasher might be a better cook than all of us. Once again, this was an exact normal cycle of my dishwasher. My first dishwasher cooked steak. Probably one of the best steaks we've cooked all day. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. She's a two for one, dishwasher and oven. What we have here is called a curling iron, and girls use it for their hair. We have it on turbo mode right now, so it is extremely hot. I'm just gonna hang out here for a little bit and let it cook. I mean, it smells good, but the question is, what happens when I click this lever? Three, two, two and a half. Oh wait, I went up instead of down. It should have been one and a half. <laughs> Open. Oh, God. That is horrible, Nick. That Why? looks like a fingernail, but the sear. I mean, it's cooked all the way through, both sides. Are you gonna eat that? I'm not eating that. You gotta eat it. I'm not eating that. You gotta that. eat it. I can't. You want it, man? You're not gonna waste Let's Try food. a piece. Try a bite. Smacking it. This isn't gonna work, but my friend Lewis actually did it on a chicken a while back. It's done! It's cooked! Oh my god!
And if it works with the chicken, why wouldn't it work with steak? Laser pointer. I'm wearing these goggles because this laser is so powerful it can make you go blind. Nick, why are you wearing a gas mask? For safety. Now typically this is used for camping to light fires. Let's see how it does on a steak. Doing my best not to stare at it. Oh, listen, it is sizzling the fat. The steak is currently cooking, so this might take some time but it's currently cooking. So as you can see, it's actually starting to render that fat on the steak. But as cool as this is, it would probably take us over a week to cook this thing. So unfortunately, it's a no. Cooking with dry ice. This is called cryogenic cooking. Theoretically, you can cook with really hot temperatures, and they say you can also cook with really cold temperatures. Keyword, theoretically. If you listen really carefully, it's sizzling away. It's my hope that those little crackling sounds you're hearing are the sounds of this steak cooking. It's been 15 minutes, let's check it out. It's either a nice crust or it's completely frozen and I have no idea which. Don't try this at home. Mm. We're gonna cook our final steak over hot molten glass. Oh my Whoa. God. That is so much more smoke and fire than I thought we were gonna have. It smells great. Whoa. Holy oh, shit. This glass is 2100 degrees, which is literally twice as hot as a normal grill, if not three times. We're already done rendering off the fat. Don't forget to go check out Max's channel and go subscribe. Maybe we were a little bit too harsh about the fire alarm steak. I feel like that's got some nice color to it. Well done, but decent color.